But I want to emphasize that during this period of time from 2008 to 2011, many people contributed key components to the success. Well, it was very impressive that he had a lot of people working together, not only his in his lab, but as well as others' lab. Like, I think there were like nine or ten labs working together. So as a result of all of these, these inputs, as well as many, many, many hours of work from talented postdocs and students in all of our labs, we were able to get this really beautiful structure of a receptor, the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, being activated by its agonist and in turn passing that signal through the transmembrane regions to the G protein. He knew he couldn't do this by himself. He knew what he wanted to get to, but you know, in order to get to the next level, he needed the help of numerous uh, groups in order to achieve what he needed to achieve. He noticed many teamworks um, accomplishing your work. If you're a nice person, if people like you and they respect your work, they're more interested in, in potentially working with you. I think one of the interesting things he said was that um, you shouldn't you shouldn't be afraid to share your ideas or ask questions. I often tell people um, about projects that are uh, in their early stages. Um, I'm not really too afraid to tell people too much. So one thing, people knew what I was doing, and if they had something they could contribute, they would, they would talk to me, or, or my colleagues would, uh, if they knew somebody that might be able to help, they'd introduce. Although he said he was a uh an introvert, I think he was very active to interact with people. I was always interested in learning new methods and, and a lot of that is really through direct interactions with people who know how to do that. Uh, then um, of course reading, uh, attending meetings, uh, meeting people who are in diff have different areas of expertise. Uh, when I came to Stanford I, I looked for scientists who were crystallographers who could you know, teach me how to try to grow crystals. And uh, it, it, it's really mainly, I would say, more than through reading, through meeting people and working with people who, who had expertise that I wanted to uh, uh, acquire. And many students study very hard. So they focus on the, their own work. And so it is very difficult to collaborate with others. Uh, but uh, today, he emphasized collaboration very important to improve uh, their work. So there are often people who are really good at things that I'm not good at, and, and, uh, and that certainly helps in a collaboration. A collaboration should be complementary, not necessarily competitive. He himself met a lot of his collaborators unexpectedly in symposiums and science conferences. So I think this kind of talk and lectures are very useful for physicians and young scientists. I never really consciously set, set out to you know, find a, an ideal group of collaborators. It kind of fell into place. So I can't take credit for knowing how I did it or planning to do it in that way. Um, it just happened. I've been very lucky. I think it's very important for Koreans to be reminded that uh, you need to work with others to be able to broaden your horizons. Uh, without that, uh, you can't accomplish even some of the basic things that you need to do. So you, f you, you get people together who um, have different expertise, and they can often just solve, I mean, there seems to be no problem that we can't get around.